Hello everybody, welcome to Indigo Terra Odyssey. Yay, today we're using the Exploring the Empaths Oracle, which I love. Number one, releasing emotional weight. I love this. It's all about separating emotional buildup from the anxious mind. And as we all know, we can acquire it very quickly, right? Without clearance, activating acts of cleansing, releasing, and returning to balance. I just did this for myself. I cleaned the tables that I work off and refreshed everything in the stones and sprayed sage and just released everything from the air i could feel the breaking and parting of the energy while it was taking place because we do need to take a step back breathe and come back to center when we feel things really trying to pull and draw us in whether it's to trigger us or whether it is to have us second guess ourselves or bring in skepticism because it all goes in that same arc with emotional buildup for sure and it's time to release some burdens that we've been carrying that we don't need to and i feel like a method for accomplishing emotional release is different for everybody and is different for every empath if you feel as if though you resonate with gemstones it'd be wise to channel your emotional weights i found myself just reaching i found um a bunch of my stones and i definitely this is one of my favorite ones and i feel like it protects from negative energy i have the runes right here and just a clear crystal quartz all help release and activate and protect and do all of those things and at the base level it's encouraging us to release pent up emotional energy we're carrying because this is part of our healing process as well whether it's forgiveness or just allowing something to dissipate and evaporate that we've been hanging on to grudge or otherwise um I watch stand-up comedy to release and laughter does that for me. Last night I was watching Mike Birbiglia and I was just dying laughing and I remembered, oh my gosh, I watched him about 15 years ago when he was talking about getting married and now he's been married for 10 years and has a child and he was so funny talking about fatherhood and that just cleared all that energy really beautiful. And something that we can do too is releasing through tears and for me if i go to a big body of water and i just kind of spell out my concerns and then say i release them you know and universe help me along with this in this journey for sure and that brings us to opening to dreams and visions once we've had these beautiful releases we're much more open because we don't have that congested energy um, this is understanding the significance of dreams and our intuition and trusting it but also not being afraid by dreams i have a lot of people that say hey what's sort of your interpretation of this and oftentimes it is legit just our subconscious working through the energy and trying to make sense of it and also problem solve and solution find in doing that because our brain is always operating like that and not to be fearful i had the craziest dream last night that i keep forgetting that guy's name that's so crazy um tom brady yeah and him and i had to go on some kind of crazy pilgrimage and it was to save something and he was like an absolute prima donna and he had ocd and he needed everything everywhere and we were fighting all the time and i thought this is crazy we only have so many hours in the day to to accomplish this and you're worried about like how the tent is set up and all of this stuff and it was so crazy and I woke up I was all frustrated and convinced I hated Tom Brady <laughs> it was so weird but again I was open to that dream and it when I looked at it 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 made a lot of sense to me and it was like listen it doesn't matter what celebrity somebody has what money somebody has what accomplishment accomplishments they have everybody has their own little special thing you know they have anxiety they have OCD they have all these things so regardless of what you see in this picture perfect life of somebody there is lots of underpinnings and emotions that they also share that are equal with ours because that was something I was yelling at him about in this dream was why do you have so many hang-ups when you are physically so strong and fit and can do anything and and have this beautiful family and all this stuff like what in the world are you you're looking for reasons to be upset about silly things you know angles and and things having a certain temperature and all of that and he said something to the fact that 
it's always with me and I've always had it. And then like in my dream, I calmed down and I was more empathetic and going, what a struggle that must be to, you know, keep checking locks on your doors and your stove and corners and measurement, like that area of your brain that can't shut off. And then it, I became more sympathetic and empathetic. And um, it was the craziest just dream ever, but I was very open to it. And it, it taught me a lesson. It also helps us visionary symbolism and literalism and researching the workings of the brain for all these different theories of consciousness. Have you ever like gone to do something and you thought you already did it because you dreamed you did it or you dreamed you were there? It's, it's all kind of intermingled in this really fabulous way. And since all of us are skilled in many different ways, that's what makes humankind so beautiful. Those of us who are highly empathetic tend to be more open to abstract symbolism, which is why we're natural artists, thinking and visionaries in, in that capacity. And they come in so many forms, divination, deep meditation, and being ready to receive. And I love the idea of a journal right by people's bed. So as soon as you wake up, you're able to start writing down what's taking place and getting excited about this. And then we're aware also of the cosmic influences and analyzing our relationship with uh, kind of metaphysics and planets and, and our connection to the zodiacs and all those various forms of things that guide and shape our opinions in our lives. So I love this conquering social anxiety because I'm seeing more and more that one of my favorite podcasts right now has Sal, Sal, Sal Volcano, Sal, I guess it is, yeah, Sal Volcano from Impractical Jokers and Chris Stefano. I just love their banter. I love how they talk about everything from their crazy socks to the minutia in their life. It's very warming and I just love it. And I, it's bizarre when you hear so many comics and stand-ups too, like all of these different things that they have. So in conquering social anxiety, because a lot of that too is like, if they know they're going to go up and they're going to be performing stand up, they can have this crippling anxiety of, um, will this material be liked all of that? And it creates this anxiousness, both professional and like personal. Cause oftentimes when we go out in the world, I've had people say to me, I, I get that weird, um, like spotlight effect where I think everybody is looking at me and seeing flaws and judging me, engaging me. Honestly, I can promise you that is not happening. People are so involved in their own energy and trying to balance that. And whether they are shopping or at a party or whatever, they kind of have that main character energy where they're focused on themselves. So they are not looking for reasons to disparage you or see something that's wrong with you. And sometimes it's hard, right? Because I am guilty of this too. I won't even want to leave the house if I just feel like if I've been like painting and making jewelry and I'm looking all crazy and I just don't, I'm not in that modality to, you know, spruce myself up, whether it is like cosmetics or, or clothes or whatever. But I also, I don't like to go out into public looking nuts either. <laughs> and I uh, bless everybody that just goes out as is, however they want. I just have this thing that I'm convinced I am going to see somebody that I do not want to see when I'm looking like that. And that's a, that's a bit of social anxiety too. And also having to converse with whether it's an old teacher or something. A lot of people really get that and it's true. But this is also making us cognizant that we can activate methods to emotionally protect ourselves socially. Lots of times I will just put in a great podcast and I'm surfing through my own little world, doing my own little thing, running errands happily, especially in higher, I call them higher voltage areas. You know, that's a DMV, that's a post office. Those are places where people aren't necessarily happy to be there and being an empath, I'll pick up on that energy and it just gives me a little bit of like, I'd rather be somewhere else. So I listen to a fun podcast and, and engage in that way. Um, also studying social dynamics from professional sources because they can talk about you know areas to shield and protect yourself this because i feel like again it might be difficult for um you know people pleasers and other people out there because it's there's so much wanting to like fit in and have acceptance and that can cause anxiousness too and remember that anxiety and excitement are very closely related too so oftentimes if i feel 
if my brain or my ego is saying, oh, this is making me anxious, I will say to myself, no, I'm simply excited. I'm excited to have this new undertaking, this new experience, or this new meeting with somebody new. And I am not kidding you, nine times out of 10 when I go out, I have some kind of really groovy out there interaction with somebody. There was some experience, there was some person that comes up that I magnetize and says, like this woman was so sweet the other day. For, it was a whole series of things. I walked in the shop and um, the owner of the shop is like, you made my day coming in here. You're so happy and you're so nice. Then this other lady comes in, then a whole group of people come in. He goes, oh, you're my lucky charm. Nobody's been in my shop all day. And then the lady turns to me and she starts complimenting my skin and saying how it is unbelievable. I mean, it, it was a really light flooded store. And I was like, what is happening? Like, I felt like, you know, all my kindreds were going to come in. It was a very unique experience, but I do find that I have a lot of those, like just great weird conversations and meeting funky little kindreds and all of that. So when we have our head up and we're present with what's going on, that can happen for us, right? No kind of shrinking violet. This is a blossoming sunflower, big, strong roots and saying, hey, hey, how are you? How are you really? I'm, I'm glad to have this experience with you and this conversation with you and a genuine smile and just really being present, which is lovely. And there's nothing like that. It could just be in a moment, in a word, in a phrase, in a compliment or receiving one uh, that can transform our day for sure, our week, our lives as well. So my beauties, that is what you are meant to hear today. I hope you all have a great day. Love and light.